Hey there, so welcome to Literary Theory and Criticism. In today's video, we are going to discuss reader response theory. When you think about a literary work, you probably think of authors and text. Authors write the literary work, so they are the one who are going to decide what a text means. And readers are readers secondary. Well, that's not the reader response theory thing. To them, reader is a person who sits in a library for hours and hours reading and interpreting a literary work. And the response of a person to a literary text is shaped by his or her own unique opinion. So according to this theory, the reader is responsible for making, just not finding, but making meaning in literary work. It's just as the saying says, like, if a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make sound? No, right? Reader is just as important as the authors who write the literary work. Officially, reader response theory get going in the late 1960 when a group of critics, including Stanley Fish, Wolfgang Eiser, Norman and Holland started asking questions about how a reader's response to a literary text. These theories stand in total opposition to theories like of new criticism, in which the reader's role in recreating the literary work is ignored. No appeal to intention of author, nor the psychology of reader. Reader response theory focuses on the reader, or you can say the audience or pay attention to readers' role in creating meaning and experience in literary work. So thus, according to them, reader is producer rather than a consumer of meaning. So reader is an active agent who creates a work of literature in the process of reading it. So meaning of text exists somewhere between the work of the page and reader's mind. Now let's move on to the major reader response theorists or critics. So first in the list and the most important, Stanley Eugene Fish. Stanley Eugene Fish is an American literary theorist. He applied a reader response perspective to a works like John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost. And he argued that we just can't understand a literary work like Milton's epic without considering the reader's reaction to it. And he's best known for his analysis of interpretive community. Now, what is that? See, when we read a uh, any work, any literary work we read, we all have our own subjective reaction to that work. And by Stanley Fish, uh, by this, according to him, this interpretive community is something that we all share. We are all part of it. That means this is a group of readers who not only share same language, but the same uh, reading convention. We share this uh, convention of reading, we share this experience together, and this is the interpretive community. Second important theorist we have Wolfgang Eiser, who is a German scholar uh, who wrote a lot about how the meaning of literary text isn't in the text itself but can be found in interaction between the reader and text. His two central uh, point of concept are implied reader and gaps. Let us understand implied reader first. Well, implied reader is a hypothetical figure who likely to get what most of what the author intended. When an author writes, they often do so with a certain reader in the mind, believing that his implied reader will understand or like uh, like metaphor, illusion, irony is in work. So implied reader, according to this theory, that each literary work has its own implied reader. And the gaps, you see, author leaves interpretive gaps we are supposed to fill in a work of our own meaning. So these two concepts are given by Wolfgang Eiser. Next, we have Hans Robert Hughes, and he was a, another German academic and notable for his reception theory. Well, reception theory is generally referred to as an audience reception to each particular reader's interpretation and making meaning from a literary text. That means this text, uh, be it a movie or art or novel, 
books, whatever, any other treaty work is not simply passively accepted by audience, but the reader or the viewer interpret the meaning based on his or her individual culture or um, background and life experience. So they're just not simply watching it, having it, consuming it, but they rather respond that they decode the meaning based on their experiences or background. And last but not the least, we are going to discuss one of the major and important critic of the Street Response series, Norman and Holland. He is uh, an American literary critic and uh, primarily known for his psychoanalytical uh, theory. He was influenced by the idea of psychoanalyst and theorist Sigmund Freud. He argued that understanding literary texts is all about understanding the psychology of the person who actually reading the text. So he is widely recognized for his scholarship, specifically related to psychoanalytic application in literary study. He says that or he believes that readers' motives strongly influence how the reader, uh, despite his claim, at last in his literary work. So that's all for today's video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for stopping by and listening. Thank you so much.